this is Annie Haslam, and you're listening to Ray Shasho on Interviewing the Legends on BBS Radio TV. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency, devoted to promoting musicians and authors worldwide. Call us today at 941-877-1552 to start your free publicity evaluation. Remember, we shine only when we make you shine. Please welcome the host of Interviewing the Legends, music journalist, author, and entrepreneur, Ray Shasho. Hello once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends on BBS Radio TV. It's brought to you by the Rockstar Chronicles Series 1, my new book, featuring over 45 intimate conversations with the greatest music legends the world will ever know. Available now at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. Symphonic Rock Legends Renaissance featuring Andy Haslam released their 50th anniversary Ashes Are Burning, an anthology live in concert with the Renaissance Chamber Orchestra and featuring special guest Jim McCarty. Renaissance is a band with a rich history, uh, unique unto themselves as progressive rock pioneers. Renaissance, the 50th anniversary Ashes Are Burning, an anthology live in concert it's two CDs plus DVD plus Blu-ray available now, and you can buy that or pre-order that at www.renaissancetouring.com backslash 50. Please welcome English vocalist, songwriter, painter, best known as the lead singer of progressive rock band Renaissance since 1971, and for her long and diverse solo singing career, Annie Haslam to Interviewing the Legends. Hello, Annie. How are you? How are you? I'm yeah, do- thank, thank you for inviting me on your show. Anytime. You know, you always have a uh, uh, like a open door policy here at, at, at the at the studio. So anytime we got to make up a uh, a Zoom interview very very soon. I know we oh, yeah, we, we tried. Yeah. We tried. <laughs> We did try. It was a very trying day. I know, I know. It's been it's been a trying you year. Know, you know, there's always a reason for everything. I know there is. Yeah, and so you, you've got to you've got to think of that, and that, it's easier to deal with if you know that. Exactly. You know. Well, the the new the, the the new recordings. It's unbelievable. You got everything you possibly want in this package. I think you know it's the 50th anniversary. Uh, the anthology live in concert. You got two CDs. You got a beautiful. Uh, live version of the concert on DVD, available also on its Blu-ray. Uh, talk, this was a concert at Keswick, right, in, in Pennsylvania? Yes, Glenside, Pennsylvania. Yeah, we, that's where we did the, the last one with the orchestra in 2017. Right. The same, same theater, yeah, it's great theater. And, and this was done, let's see, in 2019, so I'm thinking that, that was this before the pandemic hit? And, um, you know, I, I went over to England to edit it, uh, the DVD, uh, in January, um, and then uh, came back, and then we, we were preparing to, for um, our shows in Brazil on uh, March 15th, and then that's when around that, you know, February, March time, that's when it started to come to the surface, and, um, you know, we lost Brazil, and we've it's been rescheduled three times now, and they're, they're having a difficult time, as you know. Um, and, um, yeah, so that, that's when, um, that, that the whole year really we, was going to be spent, no, not all of it, because we were going to Germany, we were, do, we were doing different things. Uh, you know Patrick Moraz, don't you? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Patrick and I were going to be going to Portugal to headline um, uh, the Gouveia Rock Festival there, uh, and uh, Progressive Rock Festival, but that was cancelled. Mm. And then our Germany thing at Lorelei, you know, Night of the Prog, we were headlining, that was cancelled. Right. Uh, and that was put in for this year, and then that's just been cancelled, and that's supposed to be next year. Mm. So we lost two years' work, really, but in 2019 was when, you know, as soon as I got back from editing and we got back from Brazil, that's where the time period that we put aside to, to do all the audio mixing and to do the album artwork and then to get it out, uh, you know, in, in the fall, of course. I mean, I was a mess a lot. I mean, I just, uh, I was a mess every single day. I cried every day. Yeah. I cried, been crying for a long, long time over all this. And uh, I couldn't, couldn't even think about music, really. You know, we'd lost so much momentum. And mm-hmm. I, I, I was, I just wasn't myself. I, I, and I'm usually a very strong person, but it really kind of hit me hard. And so I, I couldn't, we couldn't get the DVD out until now. Yeah. You know, it just wasn't possible because I, I couldn't do it. I didn't have the energy or, you know, I didn't have the desire at all because I, I, I wasn't myself. <coughs> um, but now it's out and we're very proud of it. Um, you know, we've got our own orchestra. Mm-hmm. Um, Ray Tessa, who's my sidekick now, he's a wonderful guy. He's been with me for many years and was in my solo band. And, um, you know, we did have a meeting in, in London when we, we played in England in 2000. 14 and 15, and in, and, um, in 2015, we, uh, Reagan and I had a meeting with Ian McClay, was the managing director of the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Right. Because he'd written to me, ask, in, in, inviting us, um, you know, saying, we'd like to do some concerts with you again, which was incredible because uh, I can you imagine the number of people in the world that want to work with them? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> so it's, it's not easy to get a gig with them. Exactly. And so we got this amazing email, and so we had a meeting at the end of the tour and uh, about possibility of, of doing something with the Royal Philharmonic again, but the cost was so vast um, that it would have been a huge, yeah. huge uh, undertaking. And, um, you know, because I've been managing everything myself, it, we would have had to bring in, we would have done it different people that to take on all the, the different you know uh, design uh, lighting design, designers director you know every, every, all the kind all the things that, that happen when you do a proper concert you know with big orchestra and we we went through everything we just realized that we couldn't do it at that even with an indiegogo crowdfunding project you know it would have been a huge amount of money mm-hmm. and, and i thought oh i better not do this I don't want to lose my house. <laughs> and so we came back and then we, Ray and I were talking and, you know, and he said, well, you know, why don't we, why don't we do an experiment and put our own orchestra together? Yeah. And so he, he knows a lot of people and uh. he's the one who got the 10 musicians together. And they're perfect. And when we, what, I mean, when we go out, it's like a 16 piece band. Wow. It's one, oh my God, it's wonderful. The personalities all blend mm-hmm. together, you know, and everybody's smiling. They love the music, you know, and, um, and, and it just it worked brilliantly. And then, of course, in the 2017 show, that one, that's when we first played with an orchestra again in 40 years. And also I thought, oh, I think I might like to put my painting somewhere. Mm-hmm. And that's when we decided to get, bring in somebody to do a, a video of that and so that we can have that going and a different um, p- painting for every song. So I did a painting for each song that was um, enlarged to 24 feet by 12 feet. Wow. Um, I did, uh, yeah, I didn't paint them. But somebody said to me, that God, that must have taken you. must have do that. <laughs> and you did 10 of them. Well, I said, no. <laughs> we're 12 inches by 24 inches and we're large. <laughs> Now, yeah, can you see me on a ladder, like 12 foot in the air, you know, doing a painting? That's crazy. Ten, ten of them. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, that was fun. But it was a, oh, God, it was just an incredible sight. Well, you've seen that DVD, haven't you? I have, yes. Yeah, have, it's yeah. wonderful. And then yeah. we did the same with this. And I did some different paintings together, and some of them moved, which was really interesting. And um, and, and the orchestra were great again. It, mm-hmm. the, the, Hardest thing was choosing the songs, and uh, was, was it, was it going to be good enough? You know, <laughs> there's so many to choose from. And I know. Then, you know, it, 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 we did 
decided on Ashes of Burning. I don't know why we decided on Ashes. I guess because it's always been our biggest song. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe we might not do that again for a while. Right. Sometimes it's good just to have a rest, you know. And 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 but the, the main thing is as well because it was our fiftieth anniversary, uh, and I knew Jim. I stayed in touch with Jim for mm -hmm. many years. Jim McCarthy. Yeah. He was at my audition, and my audition song was Island. Really? So we, yeah, and we did that in the, for the 2017 yeah. DVD. Um, but then uh, when we were getting this together, I said, Ray, I think we should fly Jim over mm -hmm. from France. Right. And that's what we did. We flew him over, and he stayed for a few days. And, and uh, he came on, the, it came on stage at New York as well, before the Kes Keswick was the next night. Mm hmm and everybody went crazy. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and it was wonderful. It was like we'd come full circle. My yeah. God, how incredible is that? It's just amazing. I, I think the tracks, awesome. the tracks you pick are incredible. I mean, you, get, you lead off with Carpet of the Sun. I, I know you've sung that so many times, but I still love that song. Yeah, no, everybody <laughs> knows. Yeah, they want to hear that. Oh, yeah, it's a hit. It's a big hit. You yeah. Know? Ocean yeah. Gypsy, Running Hard, Midas Man, and of course, one of my favorites, which you sung to me over the phone, Symphony of Light. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> oh that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't that a fabulous piece? Oh, oh I love it. I love, I love yeah. it. And then, of course, Jim's on a couple of the tracks as well, you know, Island and uh, Ashes Are Burning. Yeah. Yep. It's, yep. it's Day of the Dreamer, uh, The Mystic and the Muse. It, it's it's fabulous. It, it is yeah. an incredible. Yeah, it's a good, yeah. It, it, Seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you, your your fans, your you have fans that stick with you through thick and thin. So this, I know. Yeah. You know, this layoff doesn't mean anything to them. They just want more music, and they can't wait yeah. till you hit the road again. Yeah. You well, know? They, they they supported us, you know, with the crowdfunding. We could never have done it without the, with the fans. They're great. You have That's wonderful like fans. Annoyed when people are rude to them. Uh, you know, because we wouldn't be there. It wasn't as photographers, basically. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the fans and the photographers and the people doing the press. Exactly. You know, if you've got if you've got a camera in your face, well, so what? Yeah. But what you get is in return. That's right. All that money. That's you right. Know? And that annoys me, but the, the, yeah. like, I'm, I'm, some of us are different. <laughs> You, you, you guys, get, you get a lot of comments on YouTube, which is great, and and it's all like a hundred percent positive. I just want to read you a couple of the comments from your fans. I think yeah. it's it's so great. Okay, it says girls can cover themselves with tats and flash all the flesh they like, but it will never replace simple beauty like this. And of course, they're talking to you, talking Aww. about you. <laughs> then there's. This one, Annie Haslam has to get the title of Dame by United Kingdom Queen. She is the queen. She's the queen of progressive rock, elected by fans around the world. The Dame title is a world population desire. <laughs> they love you. <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> I'd rather be princess than Dame. I think I think you I think you deserve that title. You know, if, if Shirley Bassey can get it, you can get it. <laughs> oh, she, is she Dame? Oh my! Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, somebody somebody wrote to me and said, "How do we do this?" I said, "Well, you've got to find somebody. You got to you know. They say that you can find people in five circles or something like that." John Wetton said something like that. He said, "You can always get to somebody you, you want to get to if you, if you, if three three phone calls." I think he said. You know, you call somebody and said, uh, like, a, a, particularly, I guess, if you're in the business, a bit easier. You call right. an agent or somebody you know who knows somebody else or so who knows somebody else, and you get them. That's what I said. This is what you need to do. You got to find somebody right. who can get to the queen. Exactly. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. It's who you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Here's the last one. Love this band for the past 48 years. Could never leave them. See, this is these are your typical fans. I mean, they're, yeah. these guys stick with you forever. <laughs> yeah, they're wonderful because there's no music. There's nothing like it. No, there isn't. No, nothing. There's nothing like it. Um, no. You know, the five of us, um, you know, the, we've jumped out. Terry Sullivan, Mickey, and John Camp, you know, it was magic. Yeah. Like, we made magic. Yeah. And uh, Betty Thatcher, of course. And, uh, and it, it's, it, it, you, it's got to be, it, it, you know, the co collaboration of energy. Uh, and it's got to be the right energy for it to succeed, you know. Um, I, I, I feel sad that, uh, and, and I think there was, a, that broke up in many ways. Mm -hmm. I don't want to name people or anything like that. Right. But once 
once you break a chain of something like something that's flowing, you know, then it can go all over the place. But what we should have done, what should have been done, and I don't know why it wasn't, is that we should have filmed the Albert Hall and also Carnegie Hall. Yes. It should have been filmed. Yeah. We had a record, we had record companies then. Why wasn't it done? Right. Don't get it. <clears throat> don't get it at all. We've got the, we've got the CDs. Yeah. Um, you know, except that uh, King Biscuit put the um, put the DVD, the CD out, and and uh, haven't paid him as any royalties since two thousand and one. Here's a future project for you. Yeah. Uh, why don't you film in a castle? Well, you see, we don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that, I'll, I'll donate for that. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to put it out in the universe because I know there's a, a lot of people that have a lot of money and they do a lot of good with it. And it would be it'd do a lot of good if they gave it to me. <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, the thing is with this band, we've always scraped by. We've never really made a great deal of money. Right. right. And um, you know, I uh, and I feel very sad about that because you know now's the time that. We could be okay, but we're not, you yeah, know? Yeah. And um, so if there's anybody out there listening who's extremely rich mm -hmm. and loves the band, you know, we need an angel, uh, an, an angel, uh, what do you call them, uh, investor. Yeah. You're wonderful. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll spread the word. I'll spread the word around. Yeah, I'm yeah. serious. If, if yeah. We need an angel investor because... You know, we could do something really wonderful next year. It's my mm -hmm. birth, my big birthday next year, but we could do something magnificent. Sure. You know, but I, uh, it's it's still gonna be. It's still it still needs money. And when you tour, anytime you tour, you have to have startup money. Yeah. And most most bands that are working continuously, which we 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 weren't really mm -hmm. twice a year. We were touring, and it was a struggle to get the startup money for the next tour. You've got to pay hotels ahead of time. And rental for the equipment and rental for vans. Oh, you've got to pay a lot of stuff up front. And, and that's the problem, you know, when you're not a working, really a working band. Yeah, it's tough. It, you you, you it guys aren't the only ones. I hear the same, uh, same issues with a lot of bands, a lot of yeah. big bands, you know, huge yeah. bands. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, no, the, this band is, that we have now, you know, the, the original band was fantastic, but, mm -hmm. you know, the band, is, and it's evolved and it's, it's, Wonderful, you know, we've got young Jeffrey. Jeffrey's the youngest in the band now. Gosh, he's quite young. I think he's 12, mm -hmm. something like that. He acts like a 12. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, but he's brilliant, you know. So we've, we've got all these, and, and Frank was with us, started off in 2009 with us. Yeah. And uh, a couple of things, he, he was on Broadway for something, and um, he had to take it because that's really, you know, really, really good to do. But, uh, Broadway, and um, it's it's very well worth it. And uh, it, it, we, cause it was much better for him to have a three months run than just do like a ten day tour with us. Exactly. And so, but we've we've managed to keep it going through that. We yep. bring in Adi uh, Charles, Descafino, and also Joe Goldberger, who was in my solo band. You know. Yeah. And um, and so it's just great now. And now we've got this rave still with me. He's he's the MD and uh, helps me with. Uh, decision making and make, mm -hmm. and he's, he's wonderful. He's a great friend, and um, of course I miss Mickey, but you know that, that was a shock. And uh, but we had to carry on, and that's sure. what we would have wanted. I yeah. know that. Yeah. Um, and um, so um, what was I saying? Oh, Mark Lamparello. Now he he changed his name to Lambert because nobody could. Men, nobody could pronounce his name. <laughs> Mark Lampariello, it was, and he got sick of it, so he's changed his, he changed his name to Lambert. Oh. <laughs> I, I, got, I got used to it now, but it's, it's funny, you know, somebody changed his <laughs> That's Don't funny. call me animal, anymore. Call me Gladys. <laughs> Gladys <laughs> Haslam. You know, Glad. Glad Haslam. <laughs> and, uh, and then we've got uh, Leo Traverse from Bay. Right. Um, and um, we've got Frank. And then we've got. Jeff, Mick, uh, yeah. then we've got uh, Mark. Mark this Lambert. Is about, this is about now. That, so we've got Ray, we've got me, we've got Frank, right. we've got Mark, um, we've got Jeffrey and Leo. And Leo, Jeffrey's yeah. Jeffrey's the, the other keyboard It's a great player. band. It's, it's an incredible band. We did have Tom Brislin, as you know. Yeah. Did you know he's in, in Kansas now? Who's that? Tom Brislin's in Kansas now. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it, 
did, you know, it didn't change anything. Obviously, that didn't change the pandemic, mm-hmm. but he's still with them and they've been recording things and that. Yeah. It, yeah, he's very happy. That's, it's wonderful. Yeah. I'm really happy for him. He's brilliant. Yeah. It's, 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 it's really what he deserved, you know, and they're great people to work with, apparently. And you guys, you, you, the band had, in the beginning, had some great players, too. You had John Wetton for a little while playing bass, right? Yeah, he didn't do many shows. Yeah. Um, um, I think he was in a band called Mogul Thrash mm-hmm. uh, before that. Uh, and uh, Ed Bicknell, do you know, have you heard of Ed Bicknell? He managed Dire Straits. Mm-hmm. He, he kind of, t- he's, he's an ex-boyfriend of mine and right. an agent, who was our agent as well. And um, I'm being very personal, aren't I? Anyway, <laughs> he's one of the funniest men on the planet. I've never, I've never, everything that comes out of his mouth is just, you just crease up and fall on the floor. You know, he's, as I said, he's brilliant. Um, he must be brilliant because he, he you know, he, he, he made them into millionaires or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so, um, but why am I telling you that? What, what, did, what was the question? I, well, uh, we were talking about some of the guys that were in the band. Oh, Fra- yeah, yeah, Fra- yeah. Fra- Frank, Frank Farrell. Dan- Danny McCullough, another guy from the Animals. Oh, yeah, yeah, Danny McCullough, yeah. 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 And, um, yeah, somebody asked me about the Roger Carr this morning. I said that was Danny McCullough's dog. <laughs> Dog, apparently. Really? And he wasn't. He wasn't with us very long. He's a nice guy, but he was. Yeah. He wasn't made for the. It was, wasn't meant. The music wasn't meant for him, but he was a nice guy. You know, I didn't. I didn't realize Miles Copeland was the uh, the manager in the beginning. Is that is that right? Yeah. Yeah. My boyfriend as well. Yeah. I've, I've had Miles on the show. I've, I've interviewed Miles. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's. Um, yeah. I lived with Miles for two years. He's oh. a, he's, it's quite a genius, actually. Yeah, he's done a lot. That's for sure. Uh, uh, he's uh, certainly uh, they broke the mold with him, I think. Yeah. Um, but um, a, a very interesting and uh, learned a lot about the music business. I think uh, being with him. Um, but yeah, he's um, he's got this chateau, isn't he, in France? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know if he's still doing the song. Well, he probably isn't right now because the, the I think he might be renting it out for holidays and things. You can go and stay there. Apparently, it's in France, a chateau in France, huh. and he had this special workshop thing where he invited all these different writers right. to come there and write together. And uh, well, clever idea, really. Hmm. And uh, but I think he lives in LA now. Yeah. Um, so so why why was Roy Roy Wood so funny? <laughs> oh God, Roy! Was, oh my God! Well, I mean, I, look at him, didn't you? I, I mean, I've seen pictures of him, kind of you know the way you dressed and everything, kind of a little bit outrageous, you know, his hair. But, well, you know, that was it's, it's Roy. Roy's different. I mean, he, 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 there's no doubt he's a genius. I've met several geniuses. Right. He's one. Right. You can see the charisma about them, you know. Uh-huh. But, uh, uh, but you, you can feel this. There's a feeling about them around them. There's a charisma. <laughs> right. Pete, Pete Townsend's got it. I, I yeah. met Pete, and and I, I could I could see the aura. It was un- unbelievable. And I did some work with him and Raphael Rod, you know, in in Pete's studio a few years back. And then Paul McCartney, you know, when he came in, when when I was doing "If I Loved You," you know, and said that just sent shivers down my spine. He said his voice was that, and I went, "It's me." <laughs> and then he stayed and, and spoke to us for about an hour, and like he had the same kind of whoa, this charisma about him, yeah, it was yeah. so special, you know. Yeah. And Roy's the same. Yeah, he's got the same same thing. He's a genius. You know, we had an eight foot round water bed. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you it's that kind of detail. Well, we're really getting personal now. <laughs> no, no, no it, it was, I, I thought when I first, you know, we, I, Coppersley Hall was the house, beautiful. I actually, I put it, was up for sale for like, I don't know, a few million uh-huh. pounds a, a couple of months ago. And I, right. I put it, I put it on, on uh, my Facebook page to show everybody where well, Liz was Roy. <laughs> wonderful because it went through all the rooms. It showed this video of, of where I lived, you know, with Roy, it was fantastic. Huh. Um, but he, the house was amazing. It had about seven acres of land, maybe a bit more, and it was uh, had leaded windows. It was like a Tudor. It looked like a Tudor mansion, but it was a copy of a Tudor mansion. And uh, one night, we uh, went to bed, and I was asleep. And then all of a sudden, he starts singing in his sleep. Really? Yeah, and huh. it was a hit. I tell you, <laughs> was he was it? singing in his, he was singing in his sleep, and I thought, how do I get off this waterbed without it moving and waking? 
<laughs> so I must have spent an hour shuffling, uh -huh. sec like millimeters. Oh my gosh! <laughs> to get to the end of the bed, and it was like on a curve because as I was moving over, it was you know the water was moving back and the, right. And then just as I and to get up, to get up, he woke up. Well, he didn't. He didn't wake up. It it, it kind of no, he did wake up. So I, I, I told him, I said, Roy, I said, you were just singing in your sleep. He said, let's go and get the tape machine. Right. Put a tape machine by the side of the bed after that. Yeah, exactly. He never did, he never did it again. Oh, gosh. Yeah, but he's just, so, I mean, to work with him on Annie in Wonderland, I learned so much from him. Apart from, I really learned how to laugh, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, never stopped. Huh. It never stopped. It was wonderful. <laughs> but, um, you know, he, he's a genius. Yeah. Absolute genius. Do you, still, do you still talk to him? Sorry? Do you still talk to him? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah he's, uh, and he's got a daughter now. I haven't met her, but she's uh -huh. got a couple of my paintings, of course. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She, yeah, I remember when we were together, we were together and said, when we, when we have children, we have a little girl we're going to call her Holly, Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Hollywood. You know, and then we broke <laughs> up, and then it, it was just met somebody else, they got married, and they had a little girl, and they called her Holly, you know, and I thought, oh, uh. <laughs> you know, but, you know, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. It's quite intense. We, we were both, um, uh, we didn't clash at all, and, and neither of us were jealous of each other. There was no need. Yeah. You know, we both had something different, special. It was different. But we yeah. were away from each other. We, we kind of we were separated by the different things that we did. I'd go to America for like, right. you know, two months or whatever, and then he'd be recording. So it was, it was difficult. It lasted for four years, though, you mm -hmm. know, and we did have a lot of fun. It was four of the best years of my life, I think. You know, I'll never forget them. Of course, I just want to remind people, Roy was a co-founder of The Move, Electric Light Orchestra, Wizard. I mean, he's done he's done so much songwriting and contributed to so many hits, you know. Oh, yeah. To so many bands. Yeah, he's. He, I agree with you. He's a genius. You he's know? a genius, there's no doubt. Yeah. When we did um, my album, Manny at Wonderland, um, I wanted to do... Um, if I loved you because my, cause my father was an amateur comedian singer. Really? And, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, he, he never was uh, never was professional, but he. I swear he could have been an opera singer because he had a tenor's voice, a bit like. But my brother Michael had a great voice. You know, right. brother Michael sings, yes. right? Yes. And a very strong, and uh, but he was, you know, he, he didn't have anybody to say, "Well, God, George, you've got a great voice. Let's mm -hmm. do something with it." Because it was like in the fifties, sixties, you know, the fifties. I would think when when I was a little girl, mm -hmm. when. He was, you know, going out and singing with this Roy and Boy. They were called. He was, he was Boy, uh, and Roy was his friend. <laughs> and oh. um, yeah, they, they, they. Now I lost my train of thought again. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> oh my God! I've so, got so much to say. Um, um, what was I, What was I going to say about that? Um, oh, well, you're talking about your dad, right? Being a, yeah. uh, he was, he was a, uh, was he a singer? Also, a comedian? Also? It was, yeah, it was a comedian. Yeah, well, well not very funny though, really. He was, more, he, he was funny, funny. When, in normal life. That's funny. Oh, uh, very funny, you know. Yeah. And he looked, and he looked like this, this comedian called Harry Worth. Uh huh. Who was, uh, an English, um, comedian who had his own show. Right. And he, and, and he looked just like him. Huh. And, um, it, this, the beginning of the Harry Worth show, was that he'd go round the streets and he'd go to a corner shop that had a window that went round a corner. Do you know what I mean? Yes, so, yes. It, so you could stand there and you could lift one leg and it looked like both your legs were going up. Uh, yeah. Do you right. know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what it did at the beginning. My dad used to do that in Cornwall. Really? He'd go round to do it round the shop. <laughs> and people used to come up for his autograph. That's great. And I, I, and I went, to, I got to see him once. I got, uh, Harry Worth was playing in Great Yarmouth and I, it was, the late 60s, I was with my boyfriend Eric, the one who, who, who you know, coached me to sing, and uh, he, we went to see him, and we, we got backstage, and, and I said, you look just like my dad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and he just, he's identical to my father. <laughs> and, you know, he, my dad used to have those big black, black glasses in those days, you know, yeah. and he used to wear like this beige colour Mac, huh. you know. As well, yeah, he was, but he was very funny. Yeah, it so was a funny family thinking. Gr it. Growing up in your family must have been a lot of fun. <laughs> it, yeah, it was. It was yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. And watching Michael, you know, started to sing.
sing and that when I was a young girl, you know, watching him sing, starting to sing and be discovered by, you know, Brian yeah. Epstein, all that, all that kind of thing. It was, that was really it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I got, I got to ask you about frog stock. <laughs> <laughs> frog stock. Yeah, that's right. Well, it started last year. <laughs> well, actually, it's been going on since the beginning of time, but I didn't know about it. Okay. Um, until I moved here, and I'm, I'm, I'm right by a pond, and then across the road is another pond, and then certain time of the year, the frogs are starting looking for girlfriends, <laughs> and, and um, you, know, you, you get them out there in the pond, like three, oh, stacked up three of them, wait, what, what, one on top of another, waiting to jump down on the female when the other one gets off. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> I guess people do that as well, don't they? Anyway, um, so... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, last year, the year before last was unbelievable. And I filmed it, a clip, and I put it on Facebook, and I, and I just got some brilliant film. There were thousands in there. And then last year, it was wonderful again. I thought, I'm going to call this drug stuff, <laughs> you know. And um, my, my ex-boyfriend, David, he, um, he he filmed it for me, and I, I just stood there. So I said, well, this is this is the sound check or something for Frog Stark. It's, you know, it's coming, it's, it's a free concert, um, you know, and um, uh, it's, you can hear them all warming up and sound checking and everything, something stupid like that, you know. And then I thought this year, and I thought I'd do it again. So I, I put it up, I said, because some people would be writing and saying, isn't it that time of year again? <laughs> It got very serious on your Facebook page. Everybody was looking forward to it. <laughs> well, the thing is, I, I, I it usually lasts for about two or three weeks, usually three weeks, but the weather was very odd. That's great. And as soon as it got cold, yeah. they were gone. But then it got warm again, and then it started to come back. So yeah. I, I, the last film I did, no, the last film I did, there was nothing there. Yeah, you cancelled it. <laughs> There was a Canadian goose I called Michael. Uh, he was there, and there was these painted turtles on a little rock. I mean, they, they were the guests, I suppose. That's oh, I know. Funny. I said, I said, I filmed it the first one I did this year. I said, oh, there's a plane going it, it, over. It must be some of the guests flying it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when you have a lockdown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, no, this is this is what always happens in Haslam Land. <laughs> I'm a nutcase. That's funny. That's hilarious. Yeah. But you, oh, God, you, it was so much fun. But you, I was really upset. And I, I said to her, make an update, and I said, look, it looks like it's going to be now. Um, <laughs> they, they, they can see them getting ready. It's a bit quiet, but you can see some of them getting ready because they were singing, you know. And I, I filmed a few, just a few of them, because that's all there were. And I said, tomorrow's the day. And then I go down there. There was nothing. <laughs> Nobody there. Nothing, not one frog. Gosh, that's crazy. You, that's you, you, not one. Yeah, probably. But I I always get concerned with people using yeah. chemicals on the garden oh, around yeah. here, you know, just to look better than the neighbours right. and you know, have it look like a carpet, you know, at the cost of killing all the dragons. There's hardly any dragonflies and butterflies around here anymore. You, you, all the insecticides they put around. You got a frog though with a crown on its head. That well, the thing is, I, I had a pool. Right. My ex my ex husband uh, when we split up bought me a, a ranch with a pool, and I don't swim. <laughs> I put a ring around me and I bomb up and down on it. You know? <laughs> um, but, um, but <laughs> I don't know. anyway, one time um, I uh, was in the before the pool was open and before I put a mesh cover on it. They had those. I had those water bags around the the, the cover, you know. Right. And I looked over one day and I saw these baby ducks. I thought, what the hell's that? And it was a mother at the side of the pool and these baby ducks. Fallen into the pool. Oh wow! Uh, the, the thing, the thing had fallen down, and, and so they couldn't get out. Of, uh, there was kind of uh, on the cover, basically, right. but because of some bit had fallen down. And I ran and I fell, and it, it was Labor Day, uh -huh. and everybody in the area had gone away somewhere for the weekend. Oh, there was gosh. nothing. It was silent. There was nobody around. I was on my own, <laughs> and I, I fell flat on my face. Oh no! I put put my left arm out and I pulled my hand over to my face to stop my, you know, my, my face from hitting. I got a bruise. I got to scrape my nose. Oh, my I gosh. I didn't break my glasses, uh, but I did break my elbow. 
You did break your elbow. Wow. Yeah, I broke my elbow. Huh. What did they do to so, it? Did, did you have surgery or just a cast or something? No, the cast. Okay. So anyway, I lay there. Uh-huh. And, well, I guess I was in shock for a few minutes. Luckily, I don't know, I think I went and got the geese. At some, I, I, had to get, I must have got the, the ducks out as well with my hand, my arm hanging. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Yeah, I know, and I thought, well, okay, we're going to be practical, and I kind of cried for a little bit, not mo- not long, put yeah, yeah. myself together, oh, lifted no. myself up, you know, the, bru- the, the the graze on my nose was killing me, oh, my gosh. and my elbow was like limp, and I thought, oh, shit, okay, I, got, I had my little dog Daisy at the time, and I thought, I've got to take her out for a, I've got to take her out for a pee now, take her out for a walk, so that... I don't know how long I'm going to be in the hospital. So I did that. So I walked up the road with my arm oh, hanging <laughs> And, and, and um, there was just nobody around. Everybody oh, God, that's the terrible. Family or whatever. And so I got home. I called my ex-husband. And um, he met me. Mm-hmm. Um, no, 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 that was a different thing. I'm going to say, no, no. But, you know, that's when I had a head-on crash and I called him up. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> that was in 2008. Yeah, that was good. Oh my God, that was close. Um, yeah, uh, I called Mark up and I, I told him what had happened. I said, uh, uh, I'm going to go down to the hospital. He said, can you drive? I said, I'm fine. I oh, managed no. to drive with, you know, I, I, I was, I, I mean, I love driving, so I'm a good driver. So right. if, I, if I knew that I could do it, I wouldn't have done it. You know, and it's only like 15 minutes from my house. Right, right. So I, 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 I called him up and he said, um, uh, do you want me to go and get you some food and bits and pieces? And uh, yeah, I said yes, please. And then what he did is he opened cat tins for me and things like that, put them in the fridge. Right, right. Because I wouldn't have been able to do a thing. Right. So that was like. <laughs> oh my so God. what I did is I didn't open the pool up for about five years. Five years. <laughs> I thought this is an omen, <laughs> and I can't swim, so I, I it, you know, I just left it. Yeah. And the, the the liner was getting old anyway. Right. And I was thinking, oh god, and it's going to be so expensive. I, I can't think about it. I've got other things to deal with. So I didn't open it for about five years, and then um, I put some things in an auction and made and raised the money to put to put it to put a new. Um, the liner in and fill it up with water and put mm-hmm. it back in action, right? But before then, um, we, what we had to do was we had to drain off the pool, right? Um, and um, and get it. All, it, it had become a. It, it, it had turned into a pond. It was full of every frog you could think of. <laughs> it, and, and snakes, frogs, everything you oh could think gosh. of. And the heron was always making little visits, you know, sitting on my studio sure. roof here, sure. and then looking down and just popping in there for lunch. And um, <laughs> so I had to find somebody. It was a guy who was a scoutmaster who was recommended by some uh, some people I knew. And so we had about a gang of eight of us taking the, the frogs out. And this one guy and his wife become very close friends. They just live about half an hour away. And he's a, I call him the nature, nature boy, nature man, because he knows everything about every animal that you can think of. He's, he's very knowledgeable. Yep. And he came over and we, he brought all these buckets and, and we filled them up, we filled them up with all different frogs. Some of them were really? green, some of them were bullfrogs. Huh. And we, we filled up the different buckets with, you know, the different varieties. And he took them up north of uh, 611 north up to where, where the lake was up there and freed them all up there. So, but the thing is, I remember, um, the, the one night they came back and the next morning and like, a lot of them were missing. It's because I saw a big shadow coming over <laughs> my house and it was a heron. Mm-hmm. It was on my studio. It's huge. And, and it's, it's been going in there and, and helping itself to, you know, lunch and dinner or whatever it wanted. Right. And, uh, but anyway, it took a while. I thought, it looked like it was never going to end, but one of the things that came out of it was that bullfrog yeah. that I'm holding. It's a big one. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God, he was huge, but he didn't turn into a prince, though, did he? <laughs> no, he didn't. Did you, kiss, did you, did you kiss him? <laughs> I kissed him. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I turned into a frog. <laughs> Funny, it? That is funny. Yeah, so that that that's really basic. I love I love all that. Anything that, that moves, I can't even yep. stand on an ant. I can't do it. Yeah. If yeah. there's anything, is stick bugs, everything in my studio. Yep. I will not start work until I've got set them all free. 
Yeah, I could never, I could never be a hunter. I could never be a hunter. I couldn't, you know, especially, you know, I love deer. Deer are so cool. They're such a nice, sweet animal. Oh, yeah. I don't, How could you kill them? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm like you. I love animals. I really yeah. do. Yeah. Well, here, here, here in Florida, you know, in your, if you had a, uh, a swimming pool here, there's a good chance an alligator might come in here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah. yeah. I sent you a picture the other day of one that's in the, one of the lakes by them, and it was like just behind, the, by their back door, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it's a shame that uh, a big people just, um, you know, there's, there's, I, I, well, I was going to say something there, but I don't want to get myself into trouble. So, um, but anyway, yeah, I, I love I love animals, mm-hmm. and uh, and then you know, if they get rid of everything, all the geese and everything, then it becomes like nothing. There's yeah. no sound, no sound, anywhere. exactly. Nothing. You know, yeah. and then you're surrounded by boring dead people or <laughs> dead boring people, whichever way you want to turn it. That's true. That's all you've got. You've got your green grass and all these dead boring people. You know, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's what the, the, their lives are, you know, just like kids themselves, you know, and, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know. I, I could say a lot, but I'm not going to. There's nothing like no, nature. English, English people are very friendly. I had a... Oh, yeah. Uh, I had the fire brigade around here a couple of months ago <laughs> um, because one of the uh, outlets in my house um, caught fire. Really? Yeah. It didn't catch fire, but it started smoking. And I called my neighbor, John, and I said, and it was a Sunday, he said, Annie, call the fire brigade. What do you call them? You don't call them the fire brigade. What do you call them? Just the firefighters, fire department. Uh, fire department, yeah. okay. And so anyway, I called them. They were around here, like, within five minutes. Really? And it came right, and it was snow. It was thick snow outside. Uh. And, and, uh, and, and some of the neighbors came out. You know, not one person came in to see if I was okay. Huh, really? That's terrible. No. Yeah. Annie, Annie, you need to move near me so we can take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen to Annie? And the weather's perfect right. down here. The weather's beautiful. You love it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm going to do because I have to decide, you know, because I'm getting on in life. I don't know what I'm going to do. You've been, you've been in Bucks County for a long time now, right? I've been here. I moved here in uh, 1991. Wow. That's a long time. It gets cold there too. <laughs> I, well, I love seasons. Yeah. I love I love rain. Oh, I love being in my studio and painting when it's raining. Right. When it's hot, it's it doesn't make any difference to my you know what I'm doing. But um, it's more comfortable comfortable to hear that rain outside and you know and to see when it snows yeah. and things like that. Oh God, I love it. I love the rain too. Well, yeah. your pa- your paintings your paintings are beautiful, and oh, okay. I-, I wanted to mention um, the guitar you have on the website from uh, let's see, it's uh, the a- the Angelico, right? The guitar. Oh, uh, uh, John. Oh, um, oh gosh, what's it the called? Angelico, I think it's a. Uh, it's, it's a, a real. Fen- it's, it's a Fender, isn't it? It's a, yes. What, what the Leonardo da Vinci one. It's a Fender, right? The Leonardo da Vinci one, right? The painted guitar. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, yeah, it's got another name, though, yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. This is what that flipping vaccine has done to my brain. <laughs> <laughs> or, or was it the wine? I'm not sure. <laughs> Could, <laughs> blame the vaccine. Wine is okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think what it's called. What's it called? I can see it right in front of me. Uh, well, Actually, um, well, I know the uh, guy's name was uh, De Quisto or something like that. De Quisto, yeah. De Quisto, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. That was the, that is, James L. De Quisto was the guy who, I guess, made the guitar? It, it, yes. It was, a, yeah, it was a certain style of guitar. An was, Italian-American luthier? It was luthier? A, no, it was a Fender De Quisto. Fender, okay. A, I think it was a Fender De Fender De Quisto. Yeah, you're, you're right. If anybody wants to look. I you're think right. it's uh, where my bio page right. or something. And, uh, yeah, that Larry Maggot, you know, the um, concert promoter, he did Live Aid, you know, Larry? Yes. You heard of him? Yep. He bought, he bought that. Oh, he did? Yeah, he bought it for his collection. He's got this amazing guitar collection. And he saw it and he, said, and he called me up and he said, Annie, huh. I'd like to buy that guitar. Wow. It's gorgeous. Said, thank- yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, I love... I love painting songs. I 
can, um, I don't know if you've noticed on my website that I've put, so I've got to put some more up actually. I look, I look at your website all the time. I'm, you know, yeah, I, I, I need to yeah, buy, I need to buy. I've done more of them actually, the songs, but I need to put, yeah. add more up because of, I couldn't really paint last year. I just, I couldn't, my, my, I couldn't do it. Really? So, no, I, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't really get into it huh. because of what was happening and I, I was, Thinking it would be healing for me, but I, my, my, mo- I was so emotional every day. It, yeah. Every, I woke up and I cried every single day. I uh, went to sleep. I was crying all the oh, time. That's like a lot of people, you know, sad. everybody, you know, yeah. was, was affected differently. Um, but yeah, I, but now I'm painting again and I'm, I'm doing a, a few things for the pledges. Um, and um, I've, I'm, I've got some commissions. I love to do pet portraits. So yeah, I love the pets. I mean, They're great. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm doing some pet portraits, and um, uh, but the songs I've got commissioned for, to do four songs. Actually, I'm doing a, a Sounds of the Sea. Mm-hmm. I'm doing uh, Let It uh, Let It Grow, Carpet of the Sun, and Ocean Gypsy. They're for different people. Oh wow! You're doing carpet of the sun. I, I look. I've done. That. You know what? Yeah, I've done several carpet yeah. of the sun. And um, what I do is, um, it, they're not the same. They mm-hmm. can't be the same. And what right. I do is, when I do anything that's uh, even for a pet portrait, I ask for them to send, you know, a picture of the pet, but also a, pet, a picture of the owner, because then I can pick up what the owner feels about the pet as mm-hmm. well in the painting. It all goes into that painting. I can't explain it. I think I've told you that before. It just pours out of me exactly and i just yeah. it's like chat being it's like channeling really just yes. pours through and uh, and then with the with the songs i get people to um tell me how that song makes them feel and to send me if, if they, it's okay mm. with them to send me a photograph yeah and so that's what um and then it, it just pours out it, and i've got i've done carpet sun maybe four or five times mm. and they're all different because they're different people you know, you, you, you covers like for uh, album covers or CD covers or whatever they're doing nowadays, y- your your style is like it, it could be recognized like a Roger Dean. You know what I mean? Well, I just did a, an hour show with Roger Dean. You know, he's, he's got yeah. his website and right. he's been doing a conversation with Roger Dean. If you've got an hour to have a good laugh, you're going to put that on because we I did an hour with him. Okay. Is, is it on YouTube yeah. or? It's on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, he's definitely. Got his website. He's got other people up there as well. Because um, Jeff Downs and uh, yeah. an actor Stephen Fry, uh, really different, interesting people. But it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we had we had a ball. Yeah, he, he bought a couple of my paintings. You know, Richard. did you really? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, your paintings are fantastic. I, I recommend everybody to go on your website and, you know, browse because yeah, they're, they're very wonderful. Different, yeah. They're wonderful. And, yeah. and I think they're affordable. I don't like to, you know, some people say, you're not charging enough. You'll never make any money. And I'm thinking, that's, that's not why I'm doing it. Right, that. right, right. <laughs> you know, so I've never, it's like my father was, you know, got the same mentality, you know, mm-hmm. I do it because I love it so much. Yeah. And um, so, you know, that's why you get musicians and artists who who, who die poor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because they're the true artists, really, because they do it because they love it, and it comes from their soul yep. or somewhere else, heavenly, you know. That's why I do what I do. I don't make money. I just, I love doing what I'm doing, you know, yeah. for, the lo- for the love of music. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. I don't care. <laughs> 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 I, I love your your cover version of uh, Genesis Ripples. That's one. Of, I love that oh, album. Yes, yeah, that's yeah. A great song. I love that album, and and you you need to do Entangled as well. That's another favorite of mine. From oh the album. really? Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. And uh, I did. Uh, did you hear me sing Dreamer? Yes, I heard you do Dreamer. And I think that was brilliant. Yeah, I did, did Billy Sherwood, and I've been asked to do. Yeah, I like Billy. I, I've known Billy for a while too. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's very talented. And, pa- and Patrick, Patrick lives here in Florida, not too far from me, really. Yes, I was so sorry. No, I was down there, but yeah. I, didn't, I couldn't. I had to go somewhere else. I didn't get time to pay. I know. You, next time you're in town, just give me a ring, and I'll, yeah. you know, we'll, well, we'll come. I, I, yeah, I do have friends down there. Do you? And, I, I, you know, they keep saying, I, I, I think what I would last time, because I was delivering a six-foot-by-four-foot painting. Oh, yeah, that's right. I took it down there. That's right. So I could go and 
see my friends and I took it in my car and I wish I hadn't because I put a lot of miles on my car <laughs> I shouldn't have done it or I should have rented a car, rented something yeah taking it down right uh, probably would have cost as much but um, I put on a, a, more money onto the painting because <laughs> it, well, it would have been about the same to ship it even yeah. more I think yeah than what, what I charged them but, oh the shipping's um, crazy the shipping's cr- the shipping is crazy you know I oh it, yeah it, but anyway I took it down there and, I, and then I went to see and I st- we stayed overnight with them in Tampa mm-hmm. um, and then we went to see Patrick in Sarasota right. stayed in a hotel a couple of nights there and then yeah. we went to my friends over in um, Melbourne Melbourne yep yeah. yeah, I went to, and then a friend of mine actually came to see us in Melbourne. He lives in Stewart, but he drove up to Melbourne to mm-hmm. see us. But I'd like to go now, and probably I would fly down, and then when, get a rental car when I'm down there so I can go and see everybody. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah something like that. Then, and, and so I'd like to do that maybe in the next couple of, I I, who knows when, but I don't, I don't see me going abroad. I, I, I don't know if it's going to happen next year with the Prog Fest thing. I don't know. I've no idea. It's booked again for next year now, and I just don't know. Have you, have you, sched- know, have, you have you scheduled dates for next for next year? Well, only the, uh, the the Brazil things he wants he wants to do again next March, but it's such a disaster there right. now. It's getting worse. Like India, um, it's second to India, I believe. And, wow. Um, huh. um, and then the the prog fest thing, uh, the, the the night of the prog, that was uh, in for July, and so they want us to go back next year. Now it's been count, you know, rescheduled again. <coughs> so they're the only two things we've got because um, prog, the night of the prog is outdoors, mm-hmm. and um, uh, you know, uh, it holds six thousand people apparently. Oh wow! And we're headlining the Friday night and. Yeah, he's. And, um, yeah. Uh, but we. <laughs> I don't, don't know. Well, um, which is the one with Dave, uh, with uh, David Pegg? You know, with the uh, Fairport Convention. You know, the big show that they do, the big concert every year. Oh, Acropody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you, that's an idiot, do, you do yeah. that one too? No, we're not doing that. Oh, no. you're not doing oh. that one. Okay. Well, we can't because it's not enough money. We've right. Got seven, we travel with seven people. Uh, Eight people, right. on, uh, nine people. Um, it's just not. That's why I don't know how it would ever work. Yeah. Going over to England or anywhere again because, you know, it will they if they if 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 they're going to be selling tickets to full capacity, it's a different story. But maybe if, if it's not and it's like fifty percent capacity, how can they pay the band their yeah. money? Yeah. Yeah. Because true. they're going to pay everything else. You know, lighting, the crew, mm-hmm. the stage crew. True. They're going to rent the theater. You know the yep. motor. It's like I think a lot of people have learned a lot about what it takes to put on a show. You know, just from the things that have come out. Yeah. Tell, you know, to, that, that, that are out there now for people to read to see why people are hurting so much. You know. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah, you really got to get yeah. your, your price for tickets nowadays. You know, you, you got to right. get your price, or else it's not worth it. You got. You really got to get your price for tickets. You know, you got. It, it seems like it's high, but that's the only way you're going to cover your expenses. You know, is, yeah. is, is, is to get a good well, price. Well, you for know, it, I think that people like, you know, all the really big stars need to drop the prices. Yeah. Because you know, those people have made them who they are. That's right. Yeah, you're and right. They're suffering, you're right. and so yeah. they've got so much money they don't know what to do with it. Probably. Yeah. And so that's yeah. what they should do. You're right. You know, I, 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 uh, this is why I love Dolly Parton. Um, I did a painting for her called Dolly's Butterfly. Really? And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and I got to give it to her at a concert. Yeah. Oh, I cool. got backstage with my friend who was the stage manager for her. Yeah. And what, she's a, what a spirit. Oh, my God. Yep. I, 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 I nearly burst into tears when she came walking towards me because it's like <laughs> watching an angel coming towards me. Oh. The, en- the energy that she was putting out yeah. was just, I've never experienced it in my life with anything. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, she she does so much for charity, a, a constant. Like, and then she's done this thing with the Moderna thing, hasn't mm-hmm. she as well? You know, she put a lot of money into that. But she does do a lot for children. She does. And she does. Yeah, she does a bit. She does. She does a lot with the money. She works hard and yeah. she, she, she shares it, you know. Very smart businesswoman. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And she's got yeah. Dollywood and all that for... Uh, yeah, Dollywood. I call this like Pathlam Land. 
Right. If they gone dead, the people will be able to visit Frogstock. Frogstock. <laughs> I, you know, that could get huge, I'm telling you. <laughs> you know what, if I live that country, I mean, um, it's kind of semi-rural where I am, but, you know, I can see the house next door over the other side of the pond. But, I, you know, if I had a good-sized <laughs> pond and I had money and I was out in the country, I would put on frog stock. <laughs> I would definitely, I would do it. And, you know, you plan, you have to just pray for the weather, really. Yeah. And, and uh, the time period and all that kind of thing. And, yeah, make something of it, you know. You know, if you could teach them to, to, to uh, you know, croak or whatever they do. But to, they sing. To... It's, it's like, it's so sweet. Well, yeah. yeah you, 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 if you go to my uh, website, uh-huh. you'll find there's, I think there's three videos. The very first one I did was of uh, the frogs. Hmm. I think it was probably around 13, 2013, 14 or whatever. Right. And it's deafening. I, I think you've but got something. I mean, even with it, all the doors shut, you could hear it. I think you got something. If you can teach them to do Renaissance songs, you know, yeah. and then you can yeah. do uh, prog frog stock. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure somebody's going to steal the idea. I, I bet you they will. <laughs> you, I've had lots, and lots of things stolen from me in the past. Oh god! You better, you, you better copyright Frogstock. <laughs> you better do that right away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god! I yeah. Uh, and I was standing there, and I was like talking to them <laughs> when when I did when that had my own and the plane went over. I was listening to that plane. I know. I'd be in for the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we've done everything else in this world. Why not? <laughs> you know, exactly. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll have to, yeah, see what we can do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. I'll interview. You I'll interview yeah, any frog you got. An angel investor, <laughs> so they could put you know some money into to the band, um, you know, and do a, a glorious tour of all the best places in the world with orchestra, you know, and and also, uh, you know, be a nice house with a lake. <laughs> I don't see why not, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's, you know, we'll see. <laughs> oh, gosh. A- Annie, here's a question. I've, I think I've asked you this before, but... Right. Let's see what you say this time. If you had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie, uh, to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who who would that be? Oh, God. <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> the, well, oh, you mean past or present? Yeah, past or oh. present. I, oh, God. Well, you know, I th- I've had experiences with him already. Yes. Uh, you I know, know. I, I, I've seen... There's a beautiful... Um, drawing that, um, it's a famous drawing that somebody else did of him when he was 65 years old. He's right. looking at it now and it looks like it's about an 80, 90, something like that. It's a, it's a pencil drawing with charcoal or whatever. Yeah. And, um, I, if, um, if in the show, I, there's something about it, everybody notices that when we start that song and it starts off with a bit that I sang to you, right? Raised from the sunlight. Right. Poured through his window. And I, I, at some of the shows I tell people about, you know, the beginning of this is when Leonardo wakes up in the morning, he goes to the window and he pulls back the, the giant yep. velvet you know, curtains and mm-hmm. everything. And, um, but then I, I, something happens to me, and I, I usually do, and then I, 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 it sounds like I'm being big headed, but I, I just know it. I'm doing a really great job of singing it. Something comes through me. It's, I can't explain it. And then, on more than one occasion, I've looked out and I've seen his face in the theatre. He's there with me. I could feel it. That's probably why it a change. That's why I feel it so right. strongly. Yeah. It's because I'm connecting to him. I think so. I think you know? so. Yeah. And um, I, I one day I did a painting, and and I don't, as you know, don't do anything with any intention, really, unless it's a portrait. You know, that's a different thing. Um, I mean, I look at the pet, and then, or I listen to a song, but I don't keep looking every two seconds. You know, I, I, I let whatever it is that's coming through me come out. And that's, it's the same thing. It's mm-hmm. exactly the same thing. You know, when I sing certain things, but yeah. I've 
I've never had that feeling with any other song other than mm. that one. That's amazing. So, you know, yeah. oh, oh, I was saying I did a painting one day and I did this brush stroke and it looks like a piece of velvet. And I thought, mm. oh, good God. And I thought, that looks like something Leonardo would yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm thinking, is he the one that was holding my hand in that in that painting, my first painting? Mm. There's somebody, but there was something, somebody holding my hand and guiding my hand. I felt it. What what a strong force he was from you know from so many years oh. ago and 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 this you know the the influence he's had on yeah. the world is amazing you know yeah well all the things that you know he that I read somewhere that um you know he did all all the inventions and and the the things the battle you know the war mm-hmm. uh, war things that he did you know um the the um what you call it? oh say for my my brain's going, um, you know, like guns and cannons and, right. and all those things he came up with, you know, yep. for, for, for fighting, they're killing, you know, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, and, and apparently uh, I read, and, and that, so I don't really know if this is absolutely truthful or not, but he did, when he did these things, he did them because he needed the money to pay for his paints. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I, I that's what I gather from, from what I read there. That's why in the song it goes kind of crazy at the beginning, you know, in the middle, the instrumental. Right. And that's when he's, he's really doing something he, he doesn't really want to do. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's against who he is. Yeah. And what he creates as, as a, you know. But I, I've got a painting here I did. And I showed it to somebody the other day, uh, my friend Kevin Culligan, actually, a wonderful friend of the band and mm-hmm. a good friend. And I was showing him these paintings and said, Annie, the, the, there's an, I see an angel in there. And I thought, oh, my God. Well, this painting, I'll send you an image of it. And it's I called it Virgin on the Rock. Virgin on and the Rock. And it's got something over it, but I didn't know whether it was an alien. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah um, well, you know about my situation with the UFOs, and I'm a big believer of that. Oh, me too, me too. Yeah, and um, so it, he said, Annie, look at it. He said, there's an angel to the right of that. And, uh, um, Annie, thank you so much. All right, Ray, yeah, send me a, and let me know what you think of the, the, the painting I did in vain. I will, I will. <laughs> okay. All right, take, you, you take care of yourself. All right, thank you. All right, yes, bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye now. Bye. For more information about Annie Hasselman Renaissance, visit www.renaissancetouring.com, facebook.com backslash renaissance touring, www.anniehaslam.com, facebook.com backslash Annie Haslam Art. Very special thanks to the great Billy James of Glass Onion PR for arranging this interview with Annie Haslam and the dynamic duo of Doug and Don Newsom, of course, of BBS Radio TV for making the magic happen for each and every broadcast of Interviewing the Legends. If you have comments, suggestions for the show, please contact me at interviewingthelegends at gmail.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho, for the very Latest interviews right into your inbox. And it's real news, people. How about that? And, of course, my new book, finally out entitled The Rockstar Chronicle, Series 1. I hope to do four. Chronicles, Truths, Confessions, Wisdom from the Music Legends that Set Us All Free. Of course, Eddie's in the book. Order yours today on the Collector's Edition hardcover or ebook. Uh, at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. It features over 45 intimate conversations with some of the greatest rock legends the world will ever know. A book review by Literary Titan says it got five stars. Thank you for joining. We will see you next time. Peace, love, take care of yourself. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for listening to Interviewing the Legends. Brought to you by the Publicity Works Agency. Call 941-877-1552 or visit us at publicityworksagency.com. Specializing in author and music artist publicity plans. We shine when we make you shine. Tune in to Interviewing the Legends. Every Tuesday 
at 7 p.m. Pacific Time on BBS Radio, Station 1.